If you're walking down an aisle with a dim fluorescent hue, better tinned fish and beans in cans, strip lighting above, cracked tiles beneath, with the realisation that most things are futile and get the sudden urge to end it all. Don't stop. Call a friend. Call your mother if you have one. And if you can stand her, listen to her talk about the price of tinned fish and canned beans. Call the speaking clock. Know that whatever time it says is the time that everything has to change. Leave the damn aisle. Don't go anywhere where they swell cheats, switch, booze, fast love or lottery tickets. See that just outside there are people lined streets that are emptier than your insides, skies darker than your own. Look for yourself, because it never helps to hear from anyone else. If you're one of those running around town like mad people, people who jump from tall buildings, buildings with glass fronts and not enough air, if you're failing to fix a broken story, if you have been cooped up for very too long in a very high tower in a dangerously low state, Plenty of TV channels and TV dinners, plenty of sweets, biscuits, chocolate desserts and plenty of wine but no love for miles and miles if you didn't get up for work today. If it's been afternoon for hours and the silence is keeping you awake. If you only remember how to draw your breath in and out like waves of thick tar cooling. If you're wishing it later, pulling the sun down with your prayers, leave the damn bed, wash the damn walls, crack open a window, even in the rain, even in the snow. Listen to the church bells outside. Know that however many times they chime is half the number of changes you have to make. Stop trying to die. Serve your time here. Do your time. Clean out the fridge. Throw away the soy milk. Soy milk is made from children's tears. Get flowers from outside and stand them in a measuring <coughs> jug. Chop raw vegetables if you have them. Know that if you're hungry for something, if you're hungry for something but you can't think what, you're more often than not only love thirsty, only bored. When the blood in your body is weary to flow, if your bones are heavy, they'll hollow. If you've made it past 30, rejoice. And if you haven't yet, celebrate. Know that there's a time coming in your life when dirt, dirt settles and patterns form pictures. If you dream of the city, but you live in the country, milk the damn cows, sell the damn sheep. Know that they'll be wishing you well posing for pictures on milk cartons or running over lush hills to be counted at the beginning of somebody else's dream. <coughs> See, they never held you back. It was you, only you. So that poem was called Mental Health, and I wrote it at a time when I thought mine was in question, and I still do from time <laughs> to time. And my name's Yester Daly Ward, and I write stories, and I write poetry, and I was always a writer, actually, even when I forgot that I was and I used to forget a lot. I think that when we're children, we, we tend to, we're happy to indulge our passions. We tend to go along with whatever it is that we want to do, and we don't worry about whether it will make us money or whether it's a constructive piece of time, we just do it. But as we get older and we get to kind of adult age, we have to put these things away because of bills, because of family stresses, and I think it's kind of important to reconnect with the things that make you you, the things that you're passionate about. I know for me, it was writing and it was storytelling. I'm going to tell you a little secret now. Um, this secret is over 20 years old and actually only me and one more person knows about it and now you. But you all, you all look quite um, trustworthy, I think. <laughs> <laughs> we used to have a stepdad, my brother and I, growing up who we didn't like at all. And he didn't look as though he liked us either. And we had a secret song for him. And... I've got it here. As you can see, I'm a lyrical genius. <laughs> um, <laughs> and this is how it went. And this is the secret song we had for him. And it went, Dad is bad and we are mad. We are glad when Dad is sad. Dad is mad when we are glad. When Dad is glad, we are bad. <laughs> Thank you for letting me share that. <laughs> but as silly and as simple as that little song was, it told a story about our lives. It brought us together. And I think storytelling 
even in its simplest form, can do that. So I'm going to skip forward to 20 years from that, the birth of that song. And uh, it was about two years ago. And I was sitting in my room that I rented in West London, and I was really depressed. And I thought, God, I, I can't live another day like the day before. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just so bored with the life as it is. And I decided to do something really, 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 I mean, I don't know where I got this from, but I decided to go away. And I chose South Africa. And I just thought, well, I can probably earn a living as a model there for a little bit, scrape by. And so I, I ran off to South Africa um, to model, which probably isn't the best career to choose if you're depressed, but it was a passport out. So <laughs> I did that, and I meant to stay for two months, and I ended up staying for two years. And in that time, I learned a lot. I fell in love, I broke a heart, I stopped drinking, started drinking again, got heartbroken, found God, lost God again. <laughs> but I rediscovered my voice, I rediscovered my passion, and, and that was largely down to the people I met and the experiences that I had there. And once I was walking um, in this area of Cape Town called Observatory, kind of a cool place where all the musicians and the artists are. And um, there was a poetry spoken word night happening and I, I had a look and I thought it was amazing. And then they, they set some homework for the following week and the theme was right about discord in the family. And I thought, God, I can do that. So, <laughs> so I wrote a poem called True Story and it went like this. It's not that dad doesn't love you or your brother, said mum, greasing up our ashy legs with Vaseline. Or that your auntie Amy's a man-stealing, cheating, backstabbing tart who can't keep a man so she has to steal somebody else's. <laughs> he and I just don't see eye to eye anymore, that's all. And he wouldn't stop eating cashew nuts in bed. It's not that your mum and I can't stand each other, said dad, pushing a dirty £10 note into my chino's pocket. Or that I forgot about your birthday but I need time to think. I'm moving in with Amy. And anyway, your mum cooks with too much salt. It wasn't so much an affair, you understand, said Auntie Amy, lacing up my brother's small Nike trainers and picking out my knots with the wooden comb shaped like a fist. But a meeting of minds, outside of our respective vows. And bodies, muttered mum when I told her later. Two-faced tramp. What a joke. Don't tell anyone I said that. Don't tell anyone I said that. It's not as though your mum's exactly an angel anyway, said Dad, with blood-red eyes and a pulsing vein in his forehead, finishing the last of the whiskey. And Auntie Amy said, easy, Winston, you've had a lot. And Dad said, don't tell me what to do. Not even my wife yet, and you think you know it all. It's not that your family are going to hell necessarily, said Grandma, boiling up the green banana yam and dumpling and grating up the coconut onto the rice and peas. They must just accept Jesus Christ into their lives and put away the drink and sin and all the lies. Now go and wash your hands and set the table. Don't worry, girl, we'll pray for them tonight. So I performed this at this poetry event, and then after, afterwards I just felt so liberated, and people were coming up to me, talk, we were all talking about it, and I just felt free. And I realized this is what I'd been missing, this, this storytelling that I'd stopped doing for ages for some really strange reason. And all of a sudden I was reconnected with all these old stories that I'd long shelved away and they, they were mine again. So I told you I fell in love in South Africa. Um, actually, I fell in love a couple of times, but we're not going to talk about that. Um, and one poem I wrote about that whole experience when I was coming out of a dark, dark place was not the end of the world, but almost. The day was not the best one, especially in my head. I was thinking calmly about stepping off the side of the mountain in the rain, arms outstretched, embracing this life, this empty space, one last time and making it look like an accident. My eyes were blurry with salt, and I hadn't eaten in days, but my mind, my mind was clearer than air on a blue sky morning in the black country. I said, no hard feelings, bright world, but maybe, just maybe you're not for me. Maybe I'm stretched too thinly press too deeply into you in a shape that I can't keep without cramping. And maybe, just maybe, your walls are too cold. Perhaps human nature is just too fickle to understand. And rainbows are not all they're cracked up to be, so why hang on until the rain ends? And that's when I saw you. Eyes did meet. Lightning did not flash, but I thought, 
Who wears a reindeer jersey and red shorts in May? And anyway, you looked kind. And the sun was peeping out. And the sky was still dark and it was still drizzling a bit. But everyone needs a little kindness. You have a smile that turns down at the sides. And those gentle kind of eyes. Those gentle kind of eyes. We sat in the hill on the car, looking at where the beach met the sea and the rain hit them both. And I, quite desperately, quite selfishly said, drive into the sea with me just once and it's done. But you drove fast in an opposite direction to a blessed place of broken brick and stone and said, this used to be my childhood house. And then drove further on further to a purple house way up on the hillside and said, hey, one day this will be home. And it wasn't perfect and it isn't now. I still have days when I want to exit the system quicker than you can say, don't you dare give up now. And you, you still have days when you can't even taste the sweetness in raw honey and neither one of us believes in pills. Days when I so want to kiss you, but your mouth is sour and my thoughts are bitter and I'm angry, just mad, just crazy with it all. But we are each other's home sweet home, love. The roof of our purple house is screwed on too tight at times and those walls, those walls can pinch a little. But my God, my God, they're always warm. And that was not the end of the world, but almost. So I think it's really important to reconnect with your stories in the same way. And storytelling often gives us that chance to look at things, use a different access point, and we can laugh, we can cry about it. Even with the trauma um, of it all, it's good to, to smile at these things, I think, in the end. So I think rediscovery for me is the art of revisiting it again. After all, at the death, of, at the funeral, as somebody close to us, we gather together and we tell stories about their lives. And it makes us upset and it makes us happy. And either one is necessary and either one is vital. And there's this wonderful quote that I stole from the internet. I think it came up before, actually. Here it is, all straight away. You own everything that happened to you. Tell your stories. If people wanted you to write warmly about them, they should have behaved better. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I mean, what I'm trying to say, I guess, is you own your stories, you own your trauma, you own your grief, you own your experiences, so use them. And you can use them to connect with people and you can use them to heal. And it's often, it's often really wonderful. So I'm going to finish with a, a poem that kind of encapsulates everything I've talked about, and it's called Poetry, and it's dedicated to someone very close to me. Nobody is saying anything at the dinner table tonight because everyone is too angry. The only noise is the sound of fine silver on bone china and other people's children playing outside, but this will give you poetry. There is no knife in the kitchen sharp enough to cut the tension and your grandmother's hands are shaking. The meat and yam stick in your throat and you do not dare even to whisper, please pass the salt. But this will give you poetry. Your father is breathing out of his mouth. He is set to beat the sparkle out of you tonight for reasons he isn't even sure of himself yet. You will come away sore and with an aching heart, but that will give you poetry. The bruising will shatter into black and blue diamonds that you can use to make your smile bright and your eyes shine. No one will sit beside you in class. You will find a twin heart like yours, scarred a little. Maybe it will work. Most likely it won't the first time, but that will give you poetry. Broken trust will crumble into gold dust and maybe, just maybe you can grow from this. And this will open the door. Thank you. Mm -hmm.